So welcome to the Chapter 3 podcast. Today we're going to be talking about water's molecular structure and how that relates to some functions that are important for life's uh, existence on Earth. This is in many ways a water planet. We can obviously think of the oceans that uh, surround the planet uh, and the lakes and the rivers as well, um, and even the rain clouds of water vapor above us. Uh, but there's also water inside of every single one of our cells. We think of that as the cytoplasm, but the cytoplasm really is just a watery mixture uh, with stuff dissolved in it. Um, and there's even water in between body cells as well. Uh, this little uh, diagram shows a capillary uh, with blood cells inside um, delivering uh, materials to body cells. Uh, but we're not completely full of cells. There's lots of space in between. Um, and that's referred to sometimes as the interstitial fluid. And really, that's just water water with some stuff dissolved in it. Uh, so we're going to be discussing uh, some properties of water. We're going to be discussing four in particular, and I want you to be able to tell me what those four properties are, why each one of them is important for life's existence on Earth, and you should be able as a group to discuss how water's molecular structure uh, relates to that property. I'm going to be giving you some hints in this video as to how that works, but I really want you to discuss this in class and, and work, it, work through your explanation with me. So, uh, what is water's um, uh, molecular structure? Well, water is just H2O, an oxygen atom bonded with two other hydrogen atoms. Those are covalent bonds. Uh, a chemistry teacher would also emphasize that there are two lone pairs on the oxygen atom, uh, but I'm going to kind of ignore that for the purposes of our discussion here in biology. So we really want to focus on those covalent bonds. As we learned in Chapter 2, those are polar covalent bonds. So that means, remember, that the oxygen is capable of pulling those negative electrons closer to it. That's going to create a charge uh, separation on the molecule. So that's going to make the oxygen side of the molecule slightly negative and the uh, uh, hydrogen side slightly positive. And when other water molecules interact with each other, you'd predict that the positive hydrogen side of one molecule might interact with the negative oxygen side of another one. And that's just a hydrogen bond. We talked about hydrogen bonds being fairly important, strong, somewhat strong bonds um, that involve OH, CO, or NH bonds of other molecules interacting with each other. So here is, uh, say, one mo water molecule at the center interacting with four other water molecules. Um, your book also depicts that in this figure right here. Um, so this shows you the three-dimensional character slightly better. This is going to be important because even though hydrogen bonds are only sort of strong, um, if we think of a mole of water being about 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, um, then even if an individual hydrogen bond is kind of uh, weak or only sort of strong, then the overall population of molecules in all of those hydrogen bonds are going to contribute to an overall strong uh, and important properties that we're going to discuss. So let's do that. Um, the first property we want to discuss that water has is that it is very cohesive and adhesive. Uh, cohesive meaning that water sticks to itself well. Adhesive meaning that it also sticks to many other substances well. That's going to be important especially for plants on this planet because they're going to have to be able to draw water up through their roots, up their stems, and to their leaves. Um, and they're going to have to do that against the force of gravity. Now as it turns out, cohesion and adhesion aren't the complete answer to that story of how they defeat gravity, uh, but we'll discuss the other force um, that uh, plays a role in chapter 36 in the next unit, uh, but cohesion and adhesion also play an important role. So, why is water cohesive? Uh, hopefully this diagram should make that ex molecular explanation rather clear. Um, why is water adhesive? Uh, because uh, many substances also have polar groups. For example, the, uh, uh, the, the lining of plant cell walls is uh, made of a substance called cellulose that we're going to see later in Chapter 5. Cellulose is just a very long chain sugar, and I showed a very simple sugar here on the right. Um, we will not have to memorize this molecular structure. We're just going to call it C6H12O6 later. Uh, but what's important to us is that that sugar has many OH groups in it. And so if you combine those in a very long chain, you're going to have a lot of OH groups with charge separation because OH bonds are polar covalent. So you uh, hopefully with that kind of picture in mind can help, uh, uh, help me understand why water is adhesive with that kind of a substance.
Good. Water's second property. It's able to moderate temperature. Water is very slow to change temperature. It takes a lot of heat energy to make uh, water um, high in temperature, and it is uh, slow to cool back down. Uh, perhaps the best example you might think of this is putting a pot of water on the stove. Uh, it takes a long time to get it to boil. Um, so similarly, why is that important for life on Earth? Because if you think of all of those oceans, if you think of all the water inside of our bodies as well, um, then we don't change temperature as fast. And, and the planet as a whole doesn't change temperature very fast, even though half of the planet faces the sun during the day and then it faces away from the sun at night. Um, uh, there obviously is a temperature difference between day and night, but it's not nearly as drastic as that of other planets, uh, like, say, Mercury that I'm depicting here, uh, which is mostly, we think, made of metal, um, which has a very low specific heat, uh, by contrast. Um, so those temperature ranges would be impossible for life, um, uh, at least Earth's life. Um, and we think that uh, if we're going to look for life on other planets, uh, the job of a lot of, or the, the, the hypothesis of a lot of um, other um, xenobiologists, biologists that look for life on other uh, possible life on other planets, uh, is we're looking for a watery planet. Um, water also has a high heat of vaporization, we say. Um, that means that it takes a lot of heat energy to get water to go from liquid to gas state. Um, and that's going to be important uh, for the mechanism of sweating, for example. Uh, when I get hot, my body triggers mechanisms that release water onto my skin. And when that liquid water turns into gas water, that dissipates a lot of the heat um, from me. Um, so it removes it and it cools me down. So why does water have those properties? Um, I'm focusing on the high specific heat property here. Um, and what we really need to be able to do is to recall what temperature is at the molecular level. Uh, the classic chemistry definition of temperature is that it's the average molecular kinetic energy. Um, and so what does that mean? Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Uh, when um, any substance is at a high temperature, those molecules are moving around faster. And so what we really want to say um, here then is that water is slow to change temperature with added heat energy. Um, you would need to be able to connect that with why water molecules wouldn't want to move around faster and perhaps be more active. Um, maybe you can make that connection as a group. Good. Water's third property that's important for life. Solid water is actually less dense than liquid water, which is surprising because most other substances, solids are more compact. Uh, they're more dense. That's going to be important for especially aquatic life because uh, thinking about the fish, say, in a lake, um, if it gets very cold in the winter time, the air above the water will get colder faster. Um, and so the, the water on the surface uh, will be facing that very cold air, and it might eventually freeze and turn to solid water, ice. Um, if that solid water were indeed more dense, it would sink, uh, exposing new liquid water to the colder air. And what you'd eventually predict is that the entire lake would freeze over. Uh, fortunately, since that, uh, since that solid water is less dense, uh, since it stays on the top, um, it freezes, um, and it perhaps insulates the rest of the liquid water below from that colder air, uh, and so typically a lake doesn't freeze over completely. Okay, uh, so why does solid water, why does ice have a lower density than liquid water? Um, this is the key diagram that's in Chapter 3 to help you and your group explain this. Um, a lot of students sometimes want to tell me that uh, the um, solid water has um, stronger hydrogen bonds. It's not a question of bond strength. Hydrogen bonds have the same strength regardless. Um, so it's more a question of... Um, uh, what's in this diagram here, um, read the captions especially, and that might help you and your group explain it to me in class. Great, so property number four, water is capable of dissolving many substances. Uh, it can't dissolve everything. For example, water and oil don't, uh, if you pour some oil into a glass of water, it uh, separates. Uh, but water can dissolve most uh, other substances. Why is that important for life? Well, if we think about the cytoplasmic environment inside of uh, all of our cells, um, that means that the watery environment can distribute materials all around the cell. Um, sugar, for example, doesn't um, pile up in one corner of the cell and make itself unavailable to other parts. Uh, 
because the water dissolves it. Um, that's also important for multicellular organisms like us, like our bloodstream. Um, our bloodstream is actually mostly plasma, which is basically just water with stuff dissolved in it. Um, even though blood looks red when we bleed, those are really just some blood cells in the overall watery solution. And uh, that watery solution is actually capable itself of, dis um, of dissolving most materials and distributing it around our body. Okay, so um, why does water dissolve most substances well? Well, um, this is a really nice figure in Chapter 3 that would help you explain that at a molecular level. Let me just give you one further hint. Uh, uh, something is dissolved in a, a larger solvent if those solvent molecules are able to surround the solute successfully. So um, this is depicting uh, table salt and a Cl being dissolved. Um, the water molecules are capable of surrounding those Na plus and Cl minus ions. Um, so that should give you a major hint there. Great, so that's uh, chapter three, our, our first major example of structure relating to function. In this case, I'm wanting you to relate water's molecular structure to some uh, uh, properties that are important for life, uh, some of the, its functions.